I am in an extremely hot and sunny Borenwood today, home of the world famous Elstree Studios, in order to talk to you and show you BTEE's sixth and latest 5G spectrum layer. BTEE are clearly extremely keen to be 5G leaders given that prior to the deployment of this sixth 5G spectrum layer, they had already five 5G spectrum layers in operation, as I covered in a recent video. Namely, these were 700 MHz 5G, 1800 MHz 5G, 2100 MHz 5G, and then two 5G spectrum layers on the C-band, thanks to their discontiguous blocks of spectrum in the N78 C band. But as already been introduced, BT EE have decided to introduce a sixth 5G layer to their network using their 2600 megahertz spectrum this time. BT EE have 50 megahertz paired of 2600 megahertz spectrum, 2 by 35 megahertz of which is commonly used for 4G services as capacity layers. The remaining 2x15 MHz is not seen too commonly. It is this not so used 15 MHz paired of 2600 MHz spectrum that BTEE are using as their sixth 5G spectrum layer at sites like the one behind me. So what's the performance like of this 2600 MHz 5G or N7? Well, on my Xiaomi Mi 11 device, which I use for testing, the highest performance I achieved was through the 2600 MHz 5G aggregated alongside 4G carriers 16, 17, and 5G2 on the downlink. And this yielded a peak throughput of about 477 megabits per second, which for the amount of spectrum is very impressive. However, obviously, if my device supported better aggregation capabilities, then the throughput would be much higher. For example, if we had, say, N7 and N78 on the NR side of the NDC, plus more carriers on the 4G side, then, then throughput would most definitely be very significantly higher. And in fact, actually having walked around testing the N78 base 5G capability of this site, the numbers were into the 800 megabit per second territory easily. So certainly with better device capability, I would probably have been able to get much better numbers involving the N7, but that's an investment that I'll need to make at um, some point once I work out which phone to get. The challenge I have in searching for devices is that support for even aggregating two NR layers together is still relatively new to the market and certainly it's going to be a while before we'll have devices that are able to aggregate six different 5G spectrum layers all together like this site can provide for. That is not to say that you need a device capable of aggregating six 5G spectrum layers in order to benefit from a site like the one behind me because having 5G on all of these different frequencies means that users get a higher quality, more contiguous experience as they move around their environment, such as between outdoors, indoors, and in complex terrain areas. And this is especially true for standalone 5G. On that note, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video.